Hello everyone, Glenn here, also known as Apache 600 on some of the internet forums I've talked to you on. Now, this video is to serve as a tutorial for setting up the control panel and getting it to work in uh, some of the games. Uh, the control panel I'll be using in this video is this guy here. He's built for a VF110. He may not be the same one that you have, but he has a Leo Bodnar inside him that powers him, uh, which is the same that you have in your panel. And he has the same uh, toggle switches, push buttons, three ways, uh, dials, and rotaries. So everything is the same, it's just a slightly different box. That's it. Uh, this video is going to go through the Windows calibration, the SV Mapper startup, and the in game uh, control bindings for this panel. First thing first, let's do the Windows calibration. So we're going to go over to the devices and go to game controllers and do the properties for our Leo Bodnar. So what I want to do is I want to go uh, and check all the buttons to make sure the buttons are working. So left to right, top to bottom, we're going to flip each switch, push each button, make sure that we get the keystroke that happens with each and every button. I've already done this, I'm not going to waste your time by going through it all, um, but uh, if something is not working correctly, let me know, uh, but everything should be working because I test all these before I send them out. Um, but with all the buttons working, then we can move on to the axes. When you first get your control panel, the axes might not be set up for your computer, so they might not be working perfectly, so we're going to probably need to calibrate them. That would be a good idea to do that anyway. So to calibrate, we're going to go Settings, Calibrate. Uh, oh, before I do this though, you do want to make sure that you can figure out which control is your joystick axis, and you want to put him in the center. Okay, you'll find out why in a moment. When you go to calibrate, the windows, uh, the wizard will pop up, and just follow along with the steps. So this is why we wanted to center the uh, the, the quote-unquote joystick or the X axis or the Y axis or whatever that was on the joystick movement. It wants you to leave the handle centered and then press the control button or hit next. And then verify that it's still centered. So I'm not going to move that piece. I'm just going to leave it there and hit next. Okay, perfect. Now it's asking for the other axes. So I don't remember which the Z axis was. Here it is. All right, this is the right engine oil radiator. So we're going to move him back and forth a couple times, make sure he's moving. Uh, he doesn't need to move full range, that's fine. We just need to move him full range on our control panel. What I want to do is I want to click display raw data. I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so he's good. I'm going to move on, get the next one. Excellent. And coming over to flaps. Uh, flaps is working. Now this is why I wanted you to click display raw data, because if we didn't have it clicked, and I move the flaps up and down, which I'm doing right now, you'd have no idea it's actually moving. It's already at its full bar deflection on screen. But if we click raw data, that's how we know it's actually moving. And it's moving just fine. Going over to the landing gear, and we've got the same story. We need the raw data on in order to see that we're actually moving the control. Coming over to the fuel selectors, those are working just fine. What I like to do is I like to move each control to its full deflection at least twice. That might just be a personal preference. I don't know. It's what I like to do. You can do what you want. Okay. That's all set. So let's see how everything works. We'll move everything back to its. We'll move everything to full deflection. Make sure it's all working. All right. Looks like it's set. Okay, let's go on to SV Mapper now. All right, when you open up SV Mapper, usually it pops up and shoots down into the corner. And if it does, so that's fine, but I've got it right here. Um, this setup, let me clear this out for a uh, demonstration. Now it's for a different control panel. Okay, so here's SV Mapper. What I did before I started SV Mapper is I unplugged all of the USB devices except for, well, mouse and keyboard, of course, but then also except for the Leo Bodnars or the control panels that you uh, that you want to calibrate. Make sure that you unplug your track IR, your joystick, your throttles, your rudder pedals, because SV Mapper can only recognize four items at a time. So you want, if you have more than four items and you turn on SV Mapper, well, your Leo Bodnar might not come up. 
So you need all those other devices unplugged and just your control panel plugged in. Um, that way you'll ensure that he's that, that that is going to appear when you open SV Mapper. Okay, so with that done, the only things that I need to worry about with SV Mapper are these items here. Cockpit control lights, gun sight illumination, um, arm bombs, those switches. You'll notice those are the two-way switches. They're either on or off. These switches we don't have to worry about. We'll let the control or the uh, the joystick bindings work with those in the game. These ones you'll notice, um, like the light intensity or these ones, the engine magnetos, they're momentary ones. So when you push them in the direction, they turn on and then snap back to the middle where it's off. Same with these push buttons. We don't have to worry about those for SV Mapper. Like I said, the only ones we need to worry about are the cockpit lights, uh, gun sight illumination, uh, pedo heat, canopy, stuff like that. Okay, so as I flip the cockpit lights on, you'll notice, for example, this one, button 12 comes up. And off, uh, button 12 goes out. So what I want to do is, with button 12 coming on, I want map key on press to show up. Oh, let's just pick a generic one. Left shift G. And when I turn off the, ca the cockpit lights, also want left shift G to light up. So, on left shift G, off left shift G. Perfect. We do the same for gun sight illumination. We'll just do H, or left shift H. Perfect. Same will be for gun sight dimmer, and so on and so forth. We do not need to worry about, like I said, um, those three-way switches, like your engine magnetos. When I turn the engine magnetos up, that comes on, and down, that comes on. But they release back to the middle. I don't have to worry about the toggle switches with SV Mapper. The one key that is a little finicky that we do need a little more attention to is the engine selection. That one, when it is flipped into the upper on position, it's left engine, or engine number one. When it's down, it goes to engine number two, or the right engine. So what we need for that is we need two different keys. I don't want left shift, let's just say left shift Z. I don't want left shift Z for both because then it would just flip between engine one. So with engine one at left shift Z, I want engine two at left shift X. So when I turn the button up to the left engine, shift Z, shift Z will happen. And down, shift X will happen. Um, if for whatever reason I make a mistake, let's say I wanted to do the canopy. Here's canopy at 17. I want to make canopy mm, left shift N. But say I accidentally put it for left uh, for 16. I go, oh no, I wanted 17 as left shift N. Well, now I've got a confliction. I've got a problem here. The only way that you can fix this is by making this thing here, the repeater, the zero. There is no way you can erase or delete or get rid of this 16 anymore. The only way you can do it is by turning the repeat to zero. That, in a sense, turns 16 off. So now, canopy, which is 17, will get the left shift N because the repeat is at 1. You'll notice that these guys also have a repeat as 1, meaning that they're on. And they're working with SP Mapper. Alright, so I'm going to go into the game, we're going to do some control bindings, but before I do that, I'm going to minimize this window. Do not close it, just minimize it, because you need this running in the background. It disappears down here, you'll see it appear right over here, that's fine, you can leave it there. I'm going to pause this video and uh, start up um, IL2 Clips of Dover. Okay, here we are in Clips of Dover. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the options and do the controls. Okay, let me just quick load a clear key binding so we don't confuse anything. Uh, let's go over to general and do the cockpit lights. Alright, so for cockpit illumination, I am going to double click this and select and press the uh, switch up and you'll see that shift G comes on. That's exactly what we wanted. Alright, for uh, decreased illumination, go over to the right of that switch a little bit. And we're going to hit down, and notice I'm going to let the joystick key do the job, not SV Mapper. Um, gun sight illumination. Toggle gun sight illumination. 
Oop, I guess I didn't find that in the demonstration. This would be incorrect. I, oh, hey, there we go. Shift H. Sometimes you do have to click it twice. Um, that is exactly what we want. And decrease and increase. Perfect. That works great. Um, let's go over to the engine selection. It should be down here somewhere. There we are. Select engine one. I'm going to flip that up. I did not catch. Oh, I do not want that. That's engine down. Here we go. Engine up. Perfect. Shift Z is what we selected. We actually actually had left shift Z. SV Mapper differentiates between left and right shift. IL2 Clips of Dover does not, and it really doesn't matter. We could have done right shift or left shift Z. It just appears here as shift Z. That's fine. And engine 2. And I'm going to flip the switch down, and it'll be shift X. Look at that. Perfect. So, that is all set. And now for the axes. And, oh, by the way, it's going to take a little while to go through all of these guys and uh, you know, click their respective, uh, you know, the directional gyro decrease and increase and course setter. You're, you're going to need to go through all of these and set these guys. Um, in this demonstration, just to keep the video short, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show some of them. For the axes, this is the... Uh, this is the important one here. Um, what you want to do is uh, let's let's just do a quick example: landing flaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double-click landing flaps, and we're going to move the landing flaps up and down. Okay, it's saying joystick R Y. Okay. Once I have that set, you can check to see if R Y is actually the the flaps by clicking on it again, and then checking to see. Okay, cool. As I move the control lever up and down. I've got movement right here, which is correct. The thing is, though, is sometimes these potentiometers, they're not perfect. So they do want to move around a little bit like this. If that's the case, when I'm going to try and select undercarriage and say the flaps lever is moving a little bit, the undercarriage is going to want to become flaps. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is as I'm moving the landing gear, I'm going to hit the clear button. As, as I hit clear, I'm going to be moving the landing flaps ahead of time so it overrides any other axes that are that are twitching a little bit to set off and, and click the selection. Uh, override, yes. Okay, so a way to double check to make sure that the undercarriage did select as the axes I want. I'm going to check right here and sure enough it works just fine. So again, here if I like right now, I am just, I, I'm not touching anything. You can see the undercarriage is twitching just a little bit. So when I go and I select the next item that I want, say the oil radiator, it might, oh, sure enough, there it is. It popped up as, as the undercarriage. I don't want that. So what I have to do, and, um, oh, there it goes again. So as I click clear, I'm going to be moving the oil radiator up and down. Sure enough, there it goes. I got it, I think. And, yep, got it. So, oil radiator 2. Oh, looks like it wanted to catch oil radiator 1. So I'm going to clear that. I'm going to just hit clear a whole bunch of times. Rx axis, because it's you see the Z is trying to pop up. Okay, Rx, good. And sure enough, Rx is the oil radiator 2. These guys, they're like I said, they're not perfect. They do like to twitch a little bit. In-game, it's not a problem at all. But calibrating can get a little tricky. Um, unfortunately, this screen recorder does not work if I try and do this in-game, so you're just going to have to take my word that this is all working. Um, what you can do is if you do notice in-game that the oil radiator, when you move it up on the control panel and it actually moves down in the game, just click the reverse over here. That should be all you need. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email with your, uh, with your problem, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, to see if we can remedy it. So I hope you guys have fun, enjoy the control panel, and have some fun flying. We'll see you later. Bye.